Hi everybody, I'm going to talk to you about how to do some of the graphing for our first lab, with the graphing with the simple scatter plot and also the bar graphs with the standard deviations. Okay, so what I've done here, uh, we have our data for the scatter plot. So this is pretty much the simplest kind of uh, you know, graph you're going to make here, just dots on a page. And so what we're going to do is just highlight the data. I'm using the uh, newest version of Excel, by the way. Yours might vary, uh, but they're all pretty much the same. So even if it's not exactly the same, it should give you the hints you need uh, to be successful here. Okay, so highlight your data first. You've got to Excel, tell Excel what it is <clears throat> you want it to graph. Now I'm going to go up to my Insert tab here. And I'm going to insert a graph, and I want it to be a scatter plot. So I'm going to go over here to scatter plot. Just choose scatter plot. Okay, and let's take a peek at that. It's looking pretty good. It looks like the numbers are doing what I expect to do, showing me that nice linear increase. Um, now, right now, I've got hours are on my x axis and the dollars earned are on my y, but I don't have any axis labels there, right? It did default the title to dollars, but I actually might want to change that too. So, in this version of Excel, to do that, you click on the graph. And up over here in Add Chart Elements is where you get to things like the chart title, if you didn't already have one, um, or the axes titles that we don't have, right? So I'm going to add in a primary horizontal axis title, and I'll say hours down here. And I will go and again add the axis titles for the vertical, that's this Y axis here. And I will call that, um, what was that? That was dollars, right? Okay. So, dollars. So, <clears throat> there's our graph. If I want to change that, that title again, maybe I want to put something else in there. Uh, money made, something like that. Um, <clears throat> so, that's basically it for the scatter plot. Just really simple. Just wanted to get you a little practice with that. Again, depending on the Excel version you're using, uh, you might have this insert tab there. It might say graph. You could also go up uh, to the very top menu, which is actually not being shown uh, on the, the screen recording right now, but there's an insert menu item right up there that you can also select. You can actually click, uh, I can click on it so you can say insert, and I could have said insert chart, right? And I could have gone down to the XY scatter and brought up a whole nother one of those, okay? So <clears throat> we got a lot of different options there for you. And hopefully that'll give you, uh, give you an idea about where, where to head to, to do some of these things, okay? Um, what I want to do now is move over to our, uh, let's see, actually, all right, let's move it down real quick so you can see. So I'm on my money tab. So I've created multiple tabs in my Excel document. This is nice because if you have several things to do, you don't have to turn in separate files. It's kind of nice to have everything just in one place. Other thing you could do is just click on these graphs and copy and paste them into Word or some other Word-like Word document uh, builder, and then uh, you can upload it in that form as well. Okay. So now I'm going to move over to the bacteria page. Okay, and I'm going to take my screen here if I can and move it up a little bit. I'm going to Okay, I moved the screen back up so you can see all the all the options up there again. So here's the data as it shows in the uh, the lab handout for us, right? So I've just typed in all the numbers. So uh, what I'm going to do is walk you through quickly the steps that are listed on the the paper, all right? So if I'm moving too fast here on the video, just follow along with the paper, and, and it's basically just like cooking a brown, making brownies or something like that. It's just uh, sort of one step at a time, right? So mean, uh, another word for average, so you're going to tell Excel that you want to do an equation by typing the equal sign in that cell. And then as soon as you start making uh, anything else, it knows you're asking for a formula. So I'm going to start typing average, and usually by the time you get to A and B, it knows what you're asking for, so you can click on it. Now I'm going to go just select the data that I want to be included inside of that average, and then hit return. And likewise here for standard deviation, I'm going to hit equals 
Now start typing standard deviation, and it's ST. DEV is the, the sort of acronym that they use for that. So I'm going to select that first one, and I will then go select my data. Now make sure you don't accidentally go down and select the 6.75 average that we just calculated. Remember, that's not part of your data. That's the average, right? So just select the, the four numbers that are part of our replicates that we've talked about. Okay, and again, hit return. So now we've got those two done. Now I could do this, you know, four or five more times, but that's kind of a, a you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So Excel makes it nice and easy for us. We can just simply select those two cells, right, the ones that I did the formulas for average and formula for standard deviation, select them both. And then if you go down to the very bottom right corner, you see that little green dot there? I'm going to move my cursor over the green dot, and the cursor turns into a black plus sign. I'm going to click and then drag over. And as I click and drag over, it's going to automatically bring the formulas all the way over, but notice that it changes what numbers it's pulling from. So if I want to double check that, let's say I go over here to site number five, and I click there, I can go up here to the formula that says average, but what the numbers are, if I click inside there, it shows me highlighted, that's like, oh, okay, those are the numbers it's pulling from. So even though I type the formula in, over here in site number one, when I drag it that direction, I drag it in that method, it automatically knows to start looking for the numbers in a different area, right? So that can save you a lot of time. So now we're going to do our second graph. I'm going to highlight those average scores. Again, I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to insert a graph, and this time I'm going to do a column graph, okay? Just a, what we might usually call a bar graph. Excel calls a column graph because it's going up and down like columns. So there's my there's my data, and that looks pretty good. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger since we got some screens set to work with. Um, and always, you know, use your brain to double check things. It's like, does it, do the numbers seem to be corresponding to the reality that you're thinking of? You know, we got a big one, we got small ones. Okay, looking pretty good. Like on the last time, the title, there's no uh, axes labels. We're going to want to add those in as well, right? You know how to do that already since you figured it out when you did it with the scatter plot. The hard thing about this, the only thing that's really challenging, um, is adding those air bars, those standard deviations that show us how variant the data is, right? So if you look at these standard deviations, most we have a zero. And at first glance, you might think, uh oh, I did something wrong. I got a zero. But if you look at the data, all four of our replicates, every single one was exactly 12. So of course, the average is obviously going to be 12. And the variation within the numbers, well, it's zero, right? Because they're all the same numbers. Whereas you come on over here where we have 40 and 34 and 55 and 33, there's a lot of variation in those numbers. And so consequently, the standard deviation is going to be a lot bigger. Right? And so what we're going to be doing is adding these numbers on, but not as an extra bar. We're going to put them as little lines that are going to show us on top of these averages how much variation there was in all the numbers that made up this average. Because remember, this is just a single number that we're plotting here, right? The average for bar number three, for site number three, was 22.75. But I don't know how many numbers made up that, right? This could be a million numbers that made up that single average. So this by this one extra number of standard deviation, it can give us a lot more information about how much variation there is in all of that data that made up that average. So. So let's put in our in our bars, all right? So I'm going to start over here as if I had just been typing something in over here. And I'm going to select the chart, right? So you always want to make sure you select the chart. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to select the bars, okay? So I've selected those bars. And come on up, and we're get, what you need to go over to is the area that's going to allow us to start working with that chart. Now, depending on the version you use, if you just click anywhere in that chart, it's going to automatically go to an area that's going to give you a lot of options for doing something with your graph. This new one doesn't necessarily do that, which is sort of interesting. you got to go over here and tell it to go over to the chart design area. Okay, so This kind of brings us back to what we saw earlier. What I'm going to do is add, again, a chart element. Right? So I'm going to click on that one, and what I want are air bars. Okay. Now, this is where Excel gets... Uh, gets confusing uh, and and sort of stupid because 
notice we're trying to plot standard deviations, and it has one that says standard deviations, which seems super straightforward, right? That's the one we should click on, except it's not. Because if we do that, what's going to happen is I'll say standard deviations, and it just automatically put lines on there. And so having a bunch of error bars that are all exactly the same, that doesn't make sense, right? Because our standard deviations were all different. So this is just one of those things that Excel is just terrible at. So I'm going to click on those, and I'm going to delete those error bars. So luckily, there's still a workaround, right? So we're going to go over here. We're going to do error bars, but we're going to go all the way to the bottom where it says more error bar options. Right? You probably never even think about checking here. When you go into those more error bar options, and over on the side now, I'm going to move my window over just so you can see the full area here. So we can see that it's put the error bars on, but can you notice that they're all looking the same again? Right? That We know that's not right because some of these should be really big. And some of these, like site number two, should have no bar whatsoever because there was zero. So we've got to modify it. So what we're going to do is modify these bars. They look okay. It's just the wrong numbers that they're showing. So the direction is saying do we want it to go up and down. That's both. That looks good. We could put little lines on the top so it makes it a little easier to see how big they are. So that's good. Here's the problem right here. It has a fixed value. Again, it makes no sense whatsoever. You'd never graph data like this and have the same standard deviation on all the all the data. It's just not, not what happens. So what we need to do is go all the way down to the bottom here where it says custom. Okay. Now in the custom area we're going to specify the values. So what we're going to do is in this top area it's saying okay what number do you want for the part that's above the bar? And below that will be what number do you want for the part that's below the bar? Okay. And what we really want is the same number going up and down. That's how the standard deviation works. It shows you how much of the, of the variation of all your numbers is sort of plus and minus your average. Okay, so we're just going to put the same things in there. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to highlight that stuff. I'm going to clear that out so it's all ready to go. And then I'm going to come on over to my data. And I'm going to select these standard deviation numbers. And I'm going to select all six of them at once. Okay, so I select all six at once. I'm going to go back and say, well, the part that I want going under the average bar is the same thing. So I'm going to select the same six cells. So you can double check that because these should be all everything exactly the same in both these areas. Now watch what happens when we do this. And I said, okay. Now we go over here and we take a look at our graph. And things are looking a lot better, right? Because we see some are big, some are small, some are nowhere. And that's exactly what we want to see. Okay, so now we've done our bar graph, we've added in our standard deviation, and we've made Excel work for us, even though at first glance it does some weird stuff for us, but it works. Okay, we'll get it there. So to finish this off, you'd want to put on a good title. You'd want to go over and insert the legend, the uh, axis um, title so you can say what we're looking at there. Um, so the number of bacteria or average number of bacteria. Um, you know, again, what are these one, two, three, four, five, six? What does that mean? What are those areas talking about? Well, really, it's these sites, right? So, you now one, two, three, that's not very good. So, one thing we can do is add uh, um, those, uh, change those numbers into these labels, right? That actually mean a lot more. So, to do that, we're going to do a right click on the uh, on the graph. And if you're on a Mac, that on a Mac laptop or something like that, that would be a two finger press, uh, or if uh, that's not working, you can also try um, uh, holding down the control button and hitting the uh, the clicker. Um, those are all different ways of getting sort of a right click um, on, a, on a Mac. We're going to go here to select data. Okay, so we're going to select data, and I'm going to move this a little bit out of the way so we can see everything. So in the select data, the thing I want to look at here is down here, horizontal axis labels. Now, what this is going to do. As I modify what's in this box right here, it's going to replace the one, two, three, four, five, six with whatever I select. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select site one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to highlight all six of those and bring it back, make sure everything looks good, and set OK. And look what happened right down on the bottom here. Instead of one, two, three, now it says site one or site two or site three. And you can imagine if instead of saying site three, if that said you know, Laguna Grande, and Site 4 said Lake Alistero, and 
Site 5 Site Roberts Lake, it'd be very important to have the real names there so we could keep track of what's going on. It'd look a lot better. It'd be a lot easier for us to understand what the data was talking about. Okay. So, folks, I hope that gives you uh, enough information to uh, complete the lab and get these, these graphs made. Again, I've probably taken longer telling you about it than it will take you to actually do it, but that's okay, right? As long as we learn, um, these are going to be skills. These are going to be the kinds of graphs you are definitely going to be making towards the end of the class when we are doing our group projects, okay? And so you're going to be doing a lot of the same things. And so um, knowing it now, getting some practice now will really pay off for us later, okay? I promise. All right, folks. Hope the, the lab goes well for you and uh, you have a lot of success. Right, take care.